Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Saad Kadi, and I'm the leader of the Hive project. Uh, I'm going to uh, make uh, an overview of what uh, the Hive, Cortex, and MIPS uh, can do to, together and how they improved since last year when I presented them the first time uh, during the uh, MISP Summit. Um, so uh, let's begin with a small overview. Uh, the, uh, so the Hive project is basically our goal is to drive the time to detect and react and also contribute back to the community which uh, helped us a lot uh, in the last uh, uh, 10 years or so. And how we do this? We do this through alert and event collection uh, as some of uh, the uh, speakers have already demonstrated through automation and collaboration within the platforms. Uh, what do we do? Uh, we produce uh, different tools for incident response and digital forensics, but also for cyber threat intelligence, but that mostly the missed part uh, of the trio. Um, so we created uh, the Hive, then later Cortex, which was basically uh, embedded in the Hive in the first version that we released to the public back in November 2016. Uh, we also have a number of libraries uh, to uh, make the interaction with the RESTful API very easy such as the Hive 4P and uh, Cortex 4P. We also produce uh, what we call uh, feeders, like uh, integration with Digital Shadows, ZeroFox, but also Synapse, which is uh, our first, uh, I would say, meta feeder, uh, which uh, now supports um, uh, um, Exchange in Office uh, 365, but uh, soon uh, enough, it will also support Curadar and other um, uh, sources of alerts in cases. Uh, who we are? We are a, a core team of uh, six uh, uh, members. Uh, we are three here. Jérôme is sitting somewhere there. Niels, I don't know where you are, back there. And uh, three others are working while we are having fun. Uh, and a large community of contributors, mainly from Soxy uh, certs, uh, for example, such as uh, uh, Andrea here, uh, and I uh, see a lot of uh, contributors here as well. Uh, we also have uh, Sebastian and Xavier, whose uh, analyzer is going to be mentioned shortly. Uh, and uh, we started developing the Hive back in February 2014. The first version was released uh, internally in October 2014. And we didn't want, I would say, yet another uh, open source project that uh, was just a POC uh, and then uh, count on the community uh, to work on it and make it work, hopefully. Uh, when we were satisfied with it and we were, uh, it was working for us, we had like 12 analysts working on it day by day. We released it back in November 2016 with the same license as, uh, uh, MISP. Um, so, um, getting back to the integration. So, well, I'm going to fly fast through, uh, through these slides because basically I will share all those slides afterwards. Uh, you can read that uh, later. Uh, but uh, the more important features are, um, I would say, coming from the integration of Cortex, MISP, in the Hive uh, through the, the ability of uh, uh, working together. And we are going to uh, see that shortly. Uh, so I'm just going to insist a bit on Cortex uh, because currently it has 93 analyzers, so 93 different ways of analyzing things. Uh, most of those analyzers c come from the community. Um, and uh, it has now the f ability to also to respond uh, so we implemented active response in the very last version. Uh, and basically it allows you to interact with your constituency or your IT environment as well. And the Hive can leverage one or multiple Cortex instances, for uh, example, for OPSEC reasons. Uh, but also Cortex can be used, uh, uh, can also leverage MISP uh, for additional analysis possibilities. Um, as for MISP, so, well, uh, it's a MISP summit, so I hope you already all uh, know all that. Uh, but the most important thing is that the, the Hive can import uh, from or export to uh, multiple MISP instances or do both at once. Uh, but also MISP can uh, um, uh, contact Cortex uh, using the la latest version, because we had a bug uh, on both sides, uh, for indicator enrichment. Um, so as for the workflow, so within the Hive, uh, it's... Uh, Pretty, I would say, uh, easy to understand. Everything is a case. So a case equals an investigation. And within a case, you can have uh, one or multiple tasks, for example, with an identification, malware analysis, containment, eradication, and so on. And you can group those, those tasks, so creating task groups. And within each task, you have uh, one or many logs. Um, and a case has zero or multiple observables. 
which you can analyze uh, through Cortex, as I said. And this generated analysis reports as demonstrated, for example, by uh, Andrea. And uh, you can create your investigations from case templates that you can uh, import and export uh, from different instances. Uh, by the way, the Hive uh, is uh, vertically and horizontally scalable, uh, which means that you can throw as many instances as you would like. And also it uses Elasticsearch for storage. So again, you can um, uh, add as many uh, nodes as, you, as you'd like to. Um, and uh, for creating cases, uh, you can uh, rely on alerts that come from different sources, uh, but also, uh, and most certainly, from MISP. And um, so the integration between the three uh, is basically this triangle, uh, which you saw an earlier version uh, of it. Uh, uh, it was improved uh, since last year. Uh, so basically, um, the Hive, as I said, uh, can receive alerts and cases from multiple sources using feeders, which are basically simple Python code leveraging the Hive 4P. Uh, it can uh, export cases to MISP. It can import events from MISP. Again, as many instances as you'd like to. Well, uh, that's theoretical. Uh, in practice, we only tested it with four. Uh, so I don't know who might have five or more instances. Um, and also, uh, it can leverage, uh, as I said, many uh, Cortex instances for doing analysis, uh, but also uh, respond. And responders could be, for example, um, answering an email from your uh, one of your constituents reporting a suspicious email. Uh, opening a ticket with uh, Jira, for example, to interact with your uh, IT uh, team to ask them, for example, to block an IP address at the proxy level or any other action uh, that can be automated. Um, the Hive has also the ability to use webhooks, so you can, for example, create a, um, uh, an application on the other end that uh, would trigger on different, I uh, would say, keywords. For example, in a task log, I write block IP at the, uh, in the proxy, and that application might do uh, what our responder can do, is basically interact with the uh, Jira ticketing system or any other ticketing system, and then, um, get back, I would say, the, the results and feed them automatically back to the Hive through the RESTful API. Uh, many possibilities. Uh, so speaking about events, uh, MISP events, so uh, they show up like this in the alert pane of uh, the Hive. So we have a few here. Uh, and when you click on one, you can preview it. Um, and then from there, um, you can uh, import it. But before doing that, you have to create a case template. So an example, uh, uh, here, very readable from certainly from the end of the room, uh, is basically have a, a number of tasks or have a communication tasks, uh, uh, some tasks that relate to the six step process of the SANS. Um, and once I have that, uh, I can just click on yes, import or ignore new updates or mark as read. And, but I, cons I can also force a different uh, template than the default one. And once I do that, I have my case uh, here. Uh, and I can see on the uh, right uh, side the uh, uh, what we call the real-time stream, where uh, like a Twitter-like feed, where you see what's happening in the platform in real time. Um, and uh, then uh, if I go, for example, to the observables, so the attributes of the MISP event all became uh, observables, and I can like have stats and uh, filter them out and start uh, doing my analysis through Cortex. Um, so. Here, uh, another example where basically I added one, uh, I imported the, uh, the event, I started working on it, and the creator of the event has added one new attribute. So automatically when he does that, uh, it will appear in the Hive, but with that little lo uh, loop uh, instead of, uh, I would say, a document. That's because you have already created a case out of that event, and automatically the new attribute arrive in your case. You don't have to do anything uh, to, uh, to do that. So you can see that I've added one attribute, and now I have like 42, and I have also a relationship with another case, because that new observable I added is an IOC, and it's already been seen in another uh, case as well. And uh, the, uh, the, new the new observable is uh, at the bottom of the screen, uh, so it's an IP address. Uh, I keep the different tags uh, I had in MISP. And um, if I want to analyze it, so I just like uh, click on it, action, run analyzer, uh, select one of the analyzers. So for example, the D-Shield uh, from uh, Xavier uh, or, uh, or uh, VirusTotal uh, get report. 
Um, and uh, so the, uh, the live stream is populated. Uh, so when it's finished, I'm also warned that it has finished the analyzing. And I have all those mini reports. For example, we see like the D-Shield score uh, is pretty elevated for that one. Um, and when I see the full report of the uh, uh, analyzer, I can have this little icon on the right side, which is show observable. So again, a new addition of the Hive 3.1 and Cortex 2.1 is the ability to auto extract uh, observables that I can add, like uh, by, by going there, just select them and add them to my case. And again, therefore, starts working back. Um, so um, if uh, I, for example, I want to contribute back and share back to MISP, and in the case that the user I'm using in the Hive um, is not part of the organization that has created uh, the event, uh, instead of throwing an error, say, well, you don't have the right to do so, we leverage a pretty nifty feature uh, of a missed project called extended events. So basically, instead of, you know, submitting a proposal or something like that, we just uh, extend the original event. Uh, but you can create also a new event in other instances um, if you have the right to do so. Um, so uh, in this case, again, taking uh, back my uh, IP address uh, that I have analyzed, uh, and I added a new uh, domain up there. Uh, so I've analyzed it using FortiGuard and also VT. Uh, and I say, okay, this one is an IOC, so I attack it as such. Uh, so is IOC yes? So I just click there. And then I export back uh, to uh, my MISP instance. Since the original event was created by Circle, I don't have the right to write there. Uh, so basically, it will use the extended event uh, functionality. Uh, and in this case, I can see that in the bottom, I have, so uh, up there, I see the Circle logo. So this is the original event in, uh, above it. Uh, it's the uh, extended event. And also, it's not published, so when the Hive send something to a MISP, you have to review it there, sanitize it. Uh, for example, data types, categories, and so on, before publishing it. And you can see now that I have added um, this one at the bottom uh, with the different uh, uh, elements uh, from uh, the Hive. So I added a comment in the Hive, which appears here in MISP. Um, and there are other functionality uh, between uh, MISP, the Hive, and Cortex. So basically, the Hive can monitor the connection health it has with all the Cortex instances and all the MISP instances it, uh, it has. Uh, and if, for example, if you have like three MISP instances and one of them is failing, the MISP logo at the uh, right uh, bottom uh, corner of the page uh, will show with an outer circle uh, in orange. And then you can click on About and see which one is failing. Uh, you can also tailor your MISP settings in the configuration in several ways. For example, you can just import certain events that have, I would say, a max attributes per event, or uh, you can uh, blacklist tags, blacklist organizations, um, and so on. Um, and in the future, uh, so Q4 of uh, this year, we are going also share sightings. So the Hive supports sightings. And we are going to share those sightings in MISP. But also, we are going to implement uh, organization and tag whitelisting. Currently, we only do blacklisting. Uh, and uh, in uh, Carnica 2, which is like a code name for uh, the Hive 4, uh, uh, so uh, we will add support for MISP objects uh, because it uh, requires a lot of work on our side. We use Elasticsearch, and we are going to highly likely migrate to a GraphDB uh, and in order to support um, new functionality we have in mind, and also MISP object. And uh, also, last, uh, next year, uh, we are going to add uh, taxonomy support uh, using MISP. Uh, because uh, currently, we are doing this, like I would say, uh, in a not a very structured way. And uh, on Wednesday, we are going to have a joint workshop here, uh, pretty fine since last year, because we have done it uh, uh, in many places in the, throughout the world. So you're welcome to step in uh, if you'd like to know more. Thank you.